Right, so last time uh, that we showed anything about Path of Exile 2, it was about the Mercenary. And uh, when we were developing the Mercenary, we realized it would play a lot better with WASD controls. That was like a key thing uh, that we decided. As we were playing, we were like, man, this would be so much better with WASD. Um, so when we showed that off in the video, we talked a little bit about that, but we didn't talk really about how it affected the rest of the game. Because as soon as we played with WASD, we were like, oh, okay, hang on. Uh, we have to add moving while shooting to this class. And then when we added moving while shooting to that class, we're like, ah, crap. We're going to have to add moving while shooting to every class, aren't we? It's going to have to be like a whole thing where just uh, the whole rest of the game, all of the skill work that we did, we have to go back through all of it again, uh, redo wow. uh, huge amounts of animations and everything. Like even like like animations, game balance, effects, like oh, the amount of redo that had the, the, the just doing that test caused was immense. So that was just a big ouch moment, right? Like, ah, oh, crap. You know, but if you find something that makes the game better, uh, when you're in development like this, you really have to engage with that and uh, and, and, and do it. So um, yeah, that was kind of like a, a really a really important thing that happened. But I think that it was actually worth it um, because uh, you know, like, well, hopefully you guys will agree when you actually play it that it was actually worth doing that change because not only did it affect um, how WASD sorry uh, how the game feels when you're playing with WASD, but it turns out that it had a massively beneficial effect on how the game feels with click to move as well. Um, it just changed a lot of things, so um, yeah, like uh, you guys should really try both control schemes with different classes and see what you think about that. Um, so I'm going to show you off three classes today. Uh, the first two are classes that we've shown before, the Warrior and the Sorceress, and the focus with these is basically what uh, has changed since the last time we showed them. Uh, and uh, then the other class that we're going to show off is uh, the Ranger, which is the most obvious uh, class that you would expect for moving while shooting to be important for. Um, and so we also did a lot of uh, skill work and development since then uh, as well. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. I've got Octavian here. Uh, he's going to be taking control of the PC. We always like to do things live. Uh, so hopefully he doesn't die and uh, everything, nothing goes wrong. Although I'm sure there'll be at least a few quirks that happen. So um, first off, I'd like to show you the Warrior. So uh, this is a class that people want to play at ExileCon, but uh, there we were using slow two-handed weapons, and today we'd like to show off a one-handed build with a shield. Now, one thing that uh, the is majorly obvious about WSD control is you get to control the direction you're facing. But once we did that, we're like, hang on a second, this guy's holding a shield. It would be really cool if uh, there was a button you could press to hold your shield up, uh, oh. And uh, then do active blocking. Uh, oh. Just like another, just like, like an action game, you sort of expect this kind of thing, right? That's nice. So uh, oh, that is what we added. Now, you actually have full damage immunity from the front while you're doing this. What? And uh, for POE 1 players, that includes spells as well. We've actually changed no. the block entirely to work from the front. Uh, there's still passive block as well, but block now works from the front and um, uh, does full damage immunity for everything. Now, that doesn't include things like um, uh, things that come from the ground. Uh, or things that come from the sky, uh, so uh, there's that. But the other thing you'll notice as well is on the bottom left hand, just above the flasks there, um, there's a little bar. And as you have that one there, so as you're getting hit, you'll notice that this bar goes up. And if it reaches maximum, which uh, you'll see here, uh, then you get uh, broken out from your block. So uh, block cannot be done infinitely this way. Um, you have to, um, uh, yeah, if you take too much damage from this way, then um, uh, you'll get broken out of it. So uh, that's, yeah, that's how to block, uh, which is like a, a, big, a big first one. Um, the other thing as well is that uh, one of the things we then had to worry about, once again, this is another one of those go through the whole game and change everything with the implications types things, is that now we have to consider for every boss uh, what skills are blockable, what skills aren't unblockable. In some cases what we have to do, a lot, of, a lot of action games, they have like a red flash on a boss when uh, they're about to do an unblockable attack. Uh, so we've done that as well, uh, which you might see a little bit later, uh, as you see a few things. There's a little red flash, you've got something that's unblockable. Um, uh, so there's that one. So as for attacks that we've got here, um, the first uh, attack I want to show is our uh, rolling slam. Uh, now this one we showed at itself on, um, but there's a nice awesome follow-up you get uh, to use, which is very applicable to this character, um, which is uh, called um, uh, Bone Shatter, that's right. So you see this indicator on the monsters here. What that effectively means is, is that um, they're close to getting a heavy stun, and when that happens you can use Bone Shatter to uh, trigger the heavy stun instantly. Um, so you see there's a little uh, bar there, stun threshold up here. Monsters, you see this mouse over there, and um, once they've got that indicator, then you can do bone shatter, and that does a big AOE and also instantly really stuns the target. In the case of white monsters, it's likely to just kill them, uh, but in the case of a boss, uh, getting them close to a heavy stun and then doing that attack um, is a great way to, um, uh, to heavy stun the boss and then follow up with um, other attacks later. Um, another skill we've got here is shield charge. 
Uh, now, shield charge in POE2 um, works a little bit differently than POE1, um, but effectively what you're going to be using for is um, knocking down monsters there. You see those zombies, um, when they kind of like got knocked down, um, we've actually added uh, heavy stun monsters to every, uh, sorry, uh, animations to every monster in the game. Um, if you uh, get a heavy stun on them, they'll get knocked back, there's a ball to get, so it knocks the ball right down. Um, so uh, every monster can be knocked down like that, and that's the uh, heavy stun of shield charge that uh, you get. So with these tools, uh, what I'm going to do is show you what boss combat can look like with a shield. And uh, this is the boss in the second area of the game, called the Carrion Pro. She's had a big upgrade since the last time we showed her. So you see here, um, I'll take the natural block all the attacks with the shield. Uh, and then I'll follow up with uh, you think getting the heavy stun. He's obviously getting too good at this boss. Now, so, uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, by the way, you also have blocking while you're doing the shield charge. So you can charge straight towards the monster and just have to flick the little Oh, that's awesome. You can still get heavy uh, stunned out of it though. Oh! oh. So that, uh, that ice skill there, because it travels along the ground, that's an example of a skill that is uh, not blockable with the shield. Uh, we 
Cooper at Coltsville. So, Isonova. So if you use Isonova uh, regularly, it comes from the character. And if you use Frostball first, uh, and then use Isonova, it comes from the that it comes from the wall. Nice. So this is a way to be able to use skills remotely uh, using um, a, a different skill. And that works for any skill that would be triggered, uh, ice skill would be triggered from the character. And uh, by the way, that uh, flame more earlier, uh, you can use that with um, Yes, you can use yeah. Flame Blast remotely from the sun. So you can use the sun and then Flame Blast directly from the sun. Because I'm going, this is why I should go off script. Uh, because uh, this is what this is what happens. I, maybe. Uh, anyway, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. so um, Ice Nova, uh, you're from the thing. Right, exactly. So uh, you can use uh, the, the ball and then Ice Nova to do it remotely. Uh, but you can also use it with other skills like Shatter, for example. So Shatter, if you use uh, Ice Nova uh, regularly, if you use Shatter on them, that uh, pops the monsters. That was not quite exactly right. So you use, use, use Ice Nova normally, and then shatter them normally. That's uh, right. And then you can use, you've got a skill that can just shatter any monster uh, remotely. But you can also use shatter on your um, uh, on the balls. So if you fire the ball, and then you shatter, then uh, they, they explode. And also any ice ice type monsters in the explosion uh, will also explode with a huge amount of energy as well. So uh, yeah, I probably did a bit of a bad job of explaining that there, but uh, you'll be able to play, you'll be able to see what that's like. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, very short we'll be coming up in the boss of this area, um, and this boss is approximately halfway through Act 1. Um, oh. So uh, this is Praetor Draven, um, who's the boss of the mausoleum. Uh, you'll do better on this one. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Demo of the Sorceress, uh, and now we're going to go have a look at the Ranger. Um, so the Ranger we haven't shown before in PO2, sorry about the backdrop there, that's 10. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, when we started to work on the Ranger, we kind of knew we had to make a class with high agility. Um, and this is, I think, um, informed a lot of other things as well about what the development has been going forward. But like, I mean, when you think of a bow character, what you're thinking of for awesome bow gameplay is Legolas. Um, yeah. You are, alright, so, yep, just, sorry, one second, let me run the sheet. There it is, sorry. He lost his face to see. He really knows what the way I would have off is. Yeah, yep. Alright, so, 
And the starting point across the movement while shooting a bow. So effectively, you can do any um, any basic bow attack or movement. So if you just hold it down there, then you'll just kind of like walk around, you can straight around and kill monsters very easily. Um, and that immediately gives you a lot more freedom on the battlefield. Uh, so what Octavian's going to do here is start each, uh, each each battle with a poison burst arrow, uh, that poison all the monsters, and then follow up with lightning arrow, uh, which can uh, arc two monsters and just die, uh, and uh, uh, you know, pass. Um, but uh, if he is in danger and getting too close to the monsters, we also have a lot of skills in POE2 that are bolting around the battlefield. So that, for example, is Frosty Cat uh, there. And if anyone wants to fire a lightning arrow to the ground here, you want going backwards and uh, around your freeze monsters very well. Now, also, once monsters are frozen, it would be really good if we had a way to take advantage of the freeze. Um, so, uh, what we want to use here is a skill called Snipe. So, Snipe is a channel uh, skill shot. And what that means is that you have that to charge up and at exactly the right time to be able to uh, get a guaranteed critical hit. So if you uh, fail to do it, you'll just get a regular arrow. If you uh, do it correctly, you get a critical hit. Uh, and also a little AoE at the end as well, uh, which uh, he's practiced a lot, so he knows how to do it well. Uh, you get uh, used to doing that kind of thing, and it feels pretty cool. Um, you can also move while shooting arrow rain skills as well. Um, so this is um, called, uh, called lightning rod. And what it does is it does more than an AoE around, um, around where it hits. Oh, but also it attracts any arcs that are nearby, like any arcing lightning will go to them. You know, that happens, it re-triggers the lightning arrow to explode again. So uh, if you use that a few times and then fire a lightning arrow at it, all those bolts on the ground are going to re-explode with uh, a large amount of damage. Um, so that's a nice little combo there as well. Um, right, so that's already a good way to take out packs. But if you've got bigger enemies, it would be nice if you had some kind of way to enhance your damage before following up. So here we have um, uh, Shocking Arrow. And what it does is when you use it on a monster, uh, after a little while, lightning strikes from the sky, it's hard to see that it's right top of the screen. Uh, but effectively, uh, you fire the arrow, after a little while, lightning will uh, strike from the sky. And this skill has a very high chance to shock, and what shock does is increase damage by up to 30% uh, from all other sources, so uh, it can be just a really nice way to increase the damage. Now, if you want to enhance our combo, uh, there's a few things that we can do using our support gem system. Now, obviously, most of the people here are going to understand about support gems, uh, but it has something that we've not really been uh, showing very much of in the demos that we've been doing. Um, so I really wanted to make sure that we included support gems uh, in this demo so that everyone understands the fact that, yeah, we still have support gems, they still all do uh, what, they, what they need to do. So um, effectively, what we're going to do here is we're going to start with multiple projectiles. And you might think the most obvious thing to do is add it to lightning arrow, uh, which uh, you can fire and then, you know, you get the arrows, obviously. Um, but actually, that's not the effect that I want to use. What I want to do instead is put it on lightning rod. And if we put it on lightning rod, that will mean that uh, the, the arrows from the sky come down to the next three. And this is really useful for when we're going to follow up with lightning arrow, because you're going to get more of your lightning explosions. But also, the damage penalty from all the projectiles is way there in such a way that it's actually it's very difficult. So uh, what that means is that you can uh, kill packs way more effectively. So you'll notice that um, that means that you can just fire one, one lightning arrow and uh, be able to use this skill immediately. Now the other thing you want to add is faster projectiles. Uh, so lightning rod, which is going to be handy, it makes them come down from the sky a little faster, which is handy. And then after that what we want to do is look at a chain. So a chain of course bounces uh, projectiles around monsters, but what it does on lightning arrow, because lightning arrow has the arcs that already have chain built in, this is going to extend the number of chains that they do, and that means that if you fire it on the ground and then use lightning arrow, uh, you fire even more rods, uh, you're going to get a uh, vast number of chains that ripple through the whole the whole group, getting a huge amount of your yeah, number. Really yeah, they just bounce around the whole battlefield now. Uh, We can also improve Stormcaller Arrow with some supports as well. So first of all, we're going to put less duration on it. Um, it's pretty obvious. You, uh, it's just going to decrease the duration until the point where the lightning arrow comes to the sky. Uh, but another one I think we can put on there is... Um, oh, another one we can think we put on there is Shock Proliferation. So in Peewee 2, have separated out the different proliferations into the different um, uh, ailments. And we've also made them all work slightly differently. So the way Shock Proliferation works is that when um, a enemy is shot, it immediately transfers the shot onto the different enemies nearby, but it doesn't persistently create the water that is around. Effectively, at the point you shot, it drops the other enemies nearby. And so that means it's a very good skill, uh, support you to put onto something you can use occasionally in battle like this, 
um, and uh, yeah, effectively allows you to shock a whole pack uh, while you're just shocking one enemy. Um, all right, next I want to talk about barrage. So barrage is a skill that effectively triples the next arrow shot you do. So if you use, uh, oops, uh, one, one, yeah. use that one, and then use, uh, use an arrow, then you get three of them effectively. And this is actually really handy. It's a lot more handy than a support gem. Uh, it's a different type of thing than what a support gem would do. Because it allows you to decide on the fly and battle what skill you want to empower. So using a lightning arrow there, you get triple the number of lightning explosions from all of those things on the ground. So that's pretty handy. But you can also use it on something like Snipe if you face a strong single target. Uh, which this isn't, but whatever. Okay, and he also comes up with the, uh, the skill shot and failed to do a Let's try that again with an actual trick shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, find something, something to pick together. There you go, these guys are doing it. Alright. The well, laser guy's pretty good too. Uh, now the first one we're going to show you is called Electrocuting Rod. So basically you jump over the monster like that, and what it does is it ejects a rod into the monster, and any lightning damage they take after that point goes on the electrocute gauge, uh, which you saw for a second there before it kills the monster. Uh, effectively it builds up an electrocute gauge, which is another type of CC like Frozen or Stun, uh, which causes the monster to be suppressed like that. That looks really cool. Electrocuted. Uh, so this is another way that the ranger has to CC monsters. And there's also a, another support gem that we can use to enhance that effect if you want to put a mirror over the pack we will uh, we'll show you. Yeah, maybe. We'll just throw that one on there as well. So Neural Overload is a skill that makes it so that uh, if you're close to electrocuting, then it, uh, I think on white monsters it's 50% of the bar, then we'll just immediately electrocute them. So that's just going to speed that up a lot. Uh, maybe a little bit hard to demonstrate that on the small pack monsters. Um, so uh, let's try. No, it's yeah. actually yeah, it's bad. Uh, definitely more useful on a box, uh, some small pack monsters. Like that. Uh, so the next one I want to show is um, some support gems that we could add to uh, our uh, Frost Escape skill. So this one here is called Frozen Nexus, and what it does is make it so that any monster that's frozen has ground ice around them, slowing other monsters down. Mm. And we're also putting the deep freeze support in there, which will prolong the duration of freezes. Um, so effectively what that means is that if we uh, use it on this group, uh, layer we're frozen. See that guy there? And these guys next to them are getting chilled as well as they go around. Um, so it's just a good way to increase the CC of that. So even if you only freeze one of the monsters with the pack, um, the uh, Frozen Nexus will mean that the rest of them get slowed down as well. So um, that's really handy. Right. Uh, right, where are we next? Uh, there we go. Alright, so fine. Uh, the next one I want to go is uh, called Vine Arrow. So, so Ranger definitely needs other tools to be able to slow monsters down from range as well. And uh, one of the, what we want to do now is look into the Ranger's uh, like nature and poison based skill set. I uh, thought it was a good to do that. So, we're going to change out one of our skill gems here. Uh, where were we? Uh, Vine Arrow, right. Uh, so Vine Arrow is a skill um, that if you throw it in your character to replace something. Um, so this is a skill that allows you to um, CC monsters at a distance. So what it does is it creates a plant here, and anything that gets near the plant, a vine will shoot out from the flower to attach to the monster, slowing it down, and also poisoning it slightly. So these monsters are slow to play, but if they were moving fast, you notice they're very, very slow when they, uh, when they, when they get hit by this thing. And, uh, one of the reasons why this is also very useful is that the flower itself can also be poisoned. Uh, so we'll just find a... Uh, so in here we can uh, poison only by default and one stack that um, you're allowed to have. You can't stack the poison up. But if the flower gets poisoned, the poison can stack infinitely on the flower. And what that means is that if you uh, sit there poisoning the flower, you can transfer all the poison stacks onto the monsters uh, by using oh. the flower. So um, you could just use the skill for the CCN effect, and it's just definitely on any build, it's good for that. But if you're playing a poison build, um, you can get very, very strong poison by doing the flower and the build. Uh, I like 
And um, we also have other skills as well that are also plants that also take advantage of poison. That are plants? Um, so, oh, uh, wait, wait, how do you, it's a quote, she just looked at this. Plant meta. Plant meta. No, it's there. Nice, alright. Cool, so uh, this skill here um, is uh, creates these plant pustules on the ground. And if you wait for a little while here, they will eventually explode. But if you poison them first, uh, which you can do like monsters, so you poison them, poison monsters, right? Then they get like the hard and they explode very quickly. Oh. Um, so effectively, you can use um, the, uh, any poison to both enhance the damage and to improve the explosion speed of the monster. So now what we're going to do is um, throw a pierce support gem on our poison burst and this is going to be really handy for larger situations because every time it pierces through a monster it's going to re-explode the uh, poison burst. Um, so if you've got a large pack of these in the city, effectively um, uh, that's going to allow you to poison to double poison the, the plants on the ground and the other monsters and also explode even faster. Um, and so uh, yeah, that's an item I could add to this skill uh, as well. Let's just try and make sure that, no, maybe we can throw it against that. Alright, it's not just getting <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Nice explosion. Okay, so, um... The little thing. I do want to show a few other ways of poisoning monsters as well. So that poison burst arrow is good, like, the main single target skill. Um, but, uh, sorry, not single target, like, sort of the mainstay on your left click. Um, but uh, another skill here we have is called Gas Arrow. And Gas Arrow is a skill that you can use to permanently create a gas cloud on the ground that poisons monsters continuously, building up even more and more stacks of poison on monsters um, for drawing your plant. I like that. Oh, buddy. Uh, or poisoning monsters as well. So it's I good like to use it. with both the other skills. Now, of course, as uh, we were doing in uh, the game, which means that effectively uses a, a resource called Spirit uh, on the character. So, anyway, every time you poison a monster, you see that there's this little 0% thing at the top left there that's going up and there, poisoning monsters. So every time you poison the monster, that number goes up. And then, whenever Octavian chooses, he can use the skill to detonate um, using the poison stacks on his character to create a poison over. Uh, that's uh, done a lot of damage to monsters as well. So it's effectively a one time use that builds up uh, by doing other poison. Uh, the stronger your poison is, the faster it builds up. I used it there, but it was only on one monster. Yeah, there was another one right there. Look at that. Yeah, the higher the number gets, the better it is. So uh, you could probably use this on the next pack you see after you put these guys. It's really good. I feel like this could be fun. This looks very satisfying. Let's see how it goes. If you see one, it's a few close guys. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, so that's uh, Bear. So, uh, where are we next? Okay, so, uh, yeah, next up we have a classic, Rain of Arrows. Yeah. So let's have a look at how Rain of Arrows is, uh, has changed. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, so Rain of Arrows. Uh, so Rain of Arrows in Here We Two um, is actually a damage over oh, time yeah. skill more. So if you use it at range right now, it'll fire some arrows, and oh, you only have one at a time, but it lasts like a little while. Um, but it's kind of like oh, reasonable wow. damage and, um, and AOE at range. Uh, but it doesn't last too long. So you can use it to sort of kill guys, but uh, you have to keep them in place. Uh, but as I said, it doesn't last too long. Now in order to improve that, um, what I want to introduce is Frenzy Charges, which uh, we're going to catch in Here 2 as well. Uh, now they're a lot harder to get in Here 2 than they were in Here 1. And that's because we want them to have, make sure that they have extremely good synergy with a lot of different skills um, on different classes, but in particular the Ranger. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put Sniper's Mark on our character. And uh, Sniper's Mark is a mark skill you can use to um, on a monster. And uh, when you do that, if any critical strike hits that monster, you then get a frenzy oh, charge. Now, you also have a skill that's going to um, oh, uh, be able to get a guaranteed critical strike, which is Snipe. So effectively, you, you, you mark the monster that you mark, kill, nice. um, then you um, uh, use Snipe on them to get a critical hit. Uh, and after you've done that, uh, you can get a really long... Uh, sorry. 
this up. There's a list up the time here. Uh, we've got a cricket shaft. Now he's got a, now we use rain of arrows. That's going to last for him forever. So uh, that rain of arrows is going to be And the boss fights in particular. Um, this can be really good. So if you've got a boss that's not too mobile, it's going to stay in the same place. You can attract more people to it and uh, do a lot of work at a time. Um, now the other thing with uh, rain of arrows is that each individual hit doesn't do very much damage. And what that means is that armor on bosses is extremely effective against them. Um, so what we want to do is so we nicely get away to deal with the armor on bosses. And uh, one uh, support thing we can use to fix that problem is called the corrode armor. Uh, so that's the road armor support. If you put it on a poison source, then when the monster is poisoned by that source, then their armor will slowly corrode away until it reaches zero, at which point their armor broken. Um, so that monster um, is going to take a while. Okay. Armor is broken now, and that means the damage it's going to take to take the other one uh, from Rain of Arrows is going to be significantly higher. Um, it's a little hard to appreciate with this rare monster that's not alive right here. Yeah, rare is what you can do. This is a channel skill like snipe. Um, the more you charge it up, the, um, the more that it uh, damage it does. So let's just grab that. And uh, yeah, gas cloud and this fire. Oh, this is this. And this again. Let's try to get some monsters, shall we? There we go. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so that's another oh. good thing. Now the gas cloud expands over time, so it can be good to leave the gas cloud in there for a little while. And if you're using it alongside your plants and armor break as well, then that can be a really good combo. And one last thing that we can do with support here before we move on to the boss, here we have a thing called exploit weakness support. And what that does is it makes a skill that hits an armor broken enemy do extra damage against uh, armor broken. So effectively, because we're armor breaking with our gas cloud, and because we plan to ex ex explode our gas clouds, we can use um, a gas cloud. Oh, yeah, uh, we can use a gas cloud, break their armor, and then um, use explosive to kill uh, them. But it seems like we're reading the boss now, so we'll just do that. Shall we? All right, so on to the boss. Boss time. Right, so this is the uh, the boss of the temples uh, called Thanos. This area, by the way, is in Act Five. Um, so there's a lot more, um, uh, there's a lot more, I guess, epicness to the bosses as you go through the game. And, uh, yeah, so this one.
brain jelly. But there was one more thing I just wanted to show you. So uh, hopefully this works. Bottom left here. All right, summon row amount. <laughs> what? So put it on there and uh, enable it. Now this one's still hot off the presses. Oh. <laughs> click on that thing. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> So basically in Peewee 2 we do actually have mounts. Oh my and, uh, god! And the benefit of this is that if you're using your um, arrow skills, you can fire oh. them off the rowers back and there's no movement penalty while they're doing that. What? So you can just keep on firing. You can hold it down. <laughs> uh, try to move forward if you can. The animation's a little bit fucking go back. And you can skills and get off the back. So for example, if you right click there, uh, you want to jump off the rower and do the, do the skill. Uh, and you can also dodge roll off the as well. And it just serves some minion when you're not riding them. Um, so uh, yeah, cool. So uh, yeah, anyway. We just thought I'd have a little sneak peek of that one. Uh, we're not quite announcing it yet, but effectively we do have, uh, we are going to have mounts. Uh, they are kind of quite fun to use. Oh and, my uh, god. And yeah, for the instant thing. So, that's what we want to show you today. Uh, now there is just one more uh, unfortunate bit of news. Uh, but I have to tell you, and that is that uh, Path of Exile 2's beta is going to unfortunately be delayed. That's okay. Um, we previously said that we'd get the beta out on That's June That's okay, 7th, guys. And uh, while I think that we will be able to get the game's content ready in time, we sort of underestimate how long it would take to get the gameplay polished to a standard that we're actually happy with. Um, when we actually come to kind of like do all this content, it turns out that like getting it actually to the point where like we're ready for someone to actually play it is a little bit harder than we expected. So we're actually not going to move any of our internal deadlines. We're still going to be creating, uh, having an alpha um, at the time that we're still going to have the beta before. But I don't think we're quite going to be ready to show it to the public at that point. And so what that means is that I don't have an exact date for you. It's going to be towards the end of the year rather than the middle of the year like we were saying before. Okay. And uh, yeah, that unfortunately is a bit of a, a, bit of a, a, bit of a pain. It certainly pains me to say it. But uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be having the beta towards the end of the year. Okay.